Hellboy the Crooked Man, a story about Hellboy and a rookie BPRD agent who find themselves stranded in 1950s rural Appalachia. They soon discover a community of witches led by a local devil who has a connection to Hellboy's past. All right, now with the plot summary out of the way, let's get on to the mini review. Based on the trailers, you had a sense of a low budget horror intense Hellboy film. And that's not necessarily what we got. It was kind of close, but not really. I mean, they played scary music, but that's about it. The film feels like an expensive fan film that threw every concept they had on a page, but didn't think to flesh it out or make it coherent. The dialogue was pretty atrocious. Every time Hellboy and Joe talk, it sounded like they were doing table reads. The supporting cast sounded much more realistic. Not to say that their dialogue was any better, but it was serviceable. It's a real chore to get through this film. Oftentimes, I found myself fiddling with my phone or thinking about other stuff. The movie starts off with a halfway decent action scene, setting up the paper thin plot that quickly gets lost halfway through the first act. They rapidly introduce characters with paper thin character development. The action and fight scenes were decent, but very short and edited to death. If bad CG takes you out of the movie, then you might want to skip this because this shit is damn near sci-fi levels of bad when it comes to the CG animation of creatures. The horror aspect is PG-13 level. I think the rated R really comes from the random F-bombs Hellboy would say throughout the horror elements you see in the trailer is exactly what you get, but it's like a slightly extended version of it. This movie fails in all departments, dialogue, comedy, horror, character development, and story. I mean, as a casual fan of Hellboy, only having seen the movies based on the character, Guillermo del Toro being the best take of the character, this movie didn't give me a good understanding of what Hellboy is, what his morals are, or anything like that. He was drugged through the story from beginning to end. I'd give this a two out of five stars. This is the type of movie you stream when you've completed your watch list and you get bored while doing laundry. Now on to the full breakdown with spoilers. You've been warned. You suck! The film opens in 1959 with Hellboy escorting a creature on a train. While on the train, he hears some supernatural noises, then warns his crew who can't seem to hear it. After hearing the noise, the creature bursts out of its container, revealing it's a demon spider and kills the male BPRD agent almost immediately. Hellboy fights the creature and during the fight, they knock the train cart off the tracks. They end up in the wood with the spider demon and the fight continues. Hellboy beats the spider into submission, it runs off, and they have to chase it. But instead of chasing it, they walk down to some strange cabin away from the train tracks. Like, what the f*** is your mission? You could have easily ripped open that vent and hopped down. Anyway, they find the cabin, a lady walks out and recognizes Hellboy. They ask to use a phone, she jokes that there is a phone in the back near their Mercedes Benz and then offers for them to come into her house for some reason, only to find a random boy paralyzed by a witch ball. Enter Tom, who awkwardly walks in at random after not seeing his family for years. Tom tells the family how to get rid of Cora's bewitchment of the child. How he knows that Cora's doing, who f***ing knows. As Tom is about to leave, Hellboy tells Joe that he needs to take her back to HQ, but she doesn't want to go and convinces Hellboy by saying that she wants or needs field training and and that Hellboy probably doesn't want to admit his failure to HQ so quickly. So what was the reason again that Hellboy would go along with staying or accompanying Tom? It's a small bewitchment that didn't require anything outside of the witch. They collect witch balls and it doesn't tell you anything about them or what they do. Tell me, 
how did we lose the main goal of retrieving the spider demon that fast? We then move on to Cora's house. They find some creature in a jar. Tom tells Hellboy and Joe that Cora's out and they have to wait for her to get back. Meanwhile, they go over Tom's backstory about how he met Cora until she comes back as a raccoon to slip back into her skin. They hear a noise upstairs. The three of them go upstairs and they watch as Cora comes back as a raccoon and slips into her skin, watching the whole process. And only after she's back in her skin does Hellboy want to shoot her for some reason. As he's about to shoot her, Joe says no for some reason. Was it the whole purpose of coming here to get her to help the boy or something? I mean, I don't know. Neither does Hellboy. Anyway, Cora does an exposition dump saying Nicole, another witch, is looking for her. Nicole shows up on the white horse, does some more exposition dump, and before she flies off, reveals that the horse she rode in on was Tom's dad. Tom's dad dies after transforming from the horse back into himself. Now they have another plot thread to go through, and that's to go bury Tom's dad at the church. Along the way, Joe asks Cora about magic. Cora warns her about using it and the damage it can cause. They end up coming to some kind of grave, and a snake grabs Cora off screen. They then search for Cora, only for Hellboy to find her floating in the air. As she's floating, a snake slithers out as Hellboy is watching the whole thing. The snake enters and exits Cora's mouth about two to three times before Hellboy decides, oh, I should do something. Like, what the f***? Hellboy fights the snake and the snake bites him multiple times. He kills the snake only to pass out until dark. He wakes up in some kind of dream sequence of his conception. After this sequence, they walk to the church to meet the blind preacher. He touches Tom's dad's face and says, this your daddy? What the fuck? I mean, how? How? How do you know this is Tom's dad by just touching his face? Have you touched every person's face in that town? And like, oh, I need to remember this face for when you come in to see me. I mean, it, this... <sighs> Anyway, as they're waiting inside the church, Nicole comes to talk to Tom through his dad. Tom ends up going outside and how nobody sees his tall, lanky ass walking through this small ass church is beyond me. Tom is outside about to make a deal with the crooked man only for Hellboy to show up a whole five minutes after he left the church to stop him. Hellboy has to chat with the crooked man before telling him to fuck off. Hellboy tries to shoot him. He disappears, then reappears and impales him with some iron rods. Hellboy retreats into the church and Joe helps him pull the iron rods out. Somehow he doesn't heal, but whatever. Doesn't make sense at this point. The crooked man goes all Night King and brings all the dead sinners buried there back to life to retrieve the bone. Hellboy shoots the undead as they run in. Tom's dad then comes back to life and Hellboy turns to shoot him. And Joe, for some reason, says, don't shoot him. Only for Tom to kill his dad again with the shovel. The priest grabs Tom and the shovel and uses his lucky bone, mind you, which made of witchcraft to carve a magical cross in the shovel. Hellboy grabs this shovel <laughs> waves it at the undead platoon and in one stroke defeats them all without touching them. Then he runs outside and hits the crooked man who turns into a crow and flies off. Hellboy tells Joe to stay at the church while they go finish the crooked man. Joe wants to do magic to help Hellboy from the church to defeat him because the priest gave her some bullshit backstory of the church being the vein of evil and the power to blow it up. I don't know. Hellboy and Tom find their way to yet another abandoned and decrepit house. They search this house and instead of staying together, Hellboy decides to go off to search a different part of the house because he hears a baby scream. Back at the church, the blind preacher who cusses like a sailor now tells Joe that he's going with her to help cast the spell, which the priest should totally be against, but fuck it. The priest's reasoning for going with her is because he's no more blind than her in the shaft. They get down the shaft into the tunnels. 
where the priest is leading the way and says something is coming. The shovel knight lights up and the priest starts swatting crows left and right and tells Joe to make a run for it. Meanwhile, back in the house, Hellboy follows some crows into a room and ends up back in the conception domain. Tom gets visited by Nicole and now his bone conveniently lights up and wards her off. Now back to Hellboy in conception domain. Now all of a sudden he wants to save his mom who is a witch and has been dead for some time. Or maybe not. This shit is confusing as hell. Back at the church in the tunnels, Joe sees the demon spider who has been missing the entire fucking film. And for some reason, it doesn't immediately attack her as she shines a light in its face. Even though in the beginning of the movie, when it jumped out of the cargo, it immediately killed nameless male BRPD agent. So anyway, now she's a master of spells after knowing fuck all about them or how to cast them or what's needed to cast it or anything. And it conveniently kills the demon spider. Back at the random house, Hellboy and the Cricket Man are fighting. The Cricket Man is beating Hellboy's ass up and down. And then Tom shows up and saves Hellboy by throwing a witch ball in one lucky ass throw right into his mouth. How did Tom know this would work? Who knows? Hellboy then shoots the Cricket Man in the head. The end. I see why they didn't release this in theaters. It's complete shite. With three writers... One being the creator of the Hellboy comic, and you still couldn't nail a good story or dialogue. For some reason, Hellboy has to constantly remind us that he can smell evil and death everywhere he goes. Bruh, once is enough, and the rest could be a visual tell that he senses something. My other gripe is Hellboy moans, groans, and grunts you to death in this movie. Dave Harbour's Hellboy is much more tolerable than this. The jokes don't land, the dialogue is clunky, character motivations are paper thin, if existing at all. This is yet another story of the protagonist getting drugged through his own story, not making any decisions on his own that affects the plot in any meaningful way. Joe Schmo tells Hellboy what and what not to do at every turn. Pass. If you like this review, leave a comment, leave a like. Until next time.